Crochet Interest Group, Black Students Alliance, and Book Challenges. All this and more on today's episode of the Cat's Eye News. Hey Novi, Black History Month is here, so come celebrate black beauty with your BSA club. BSA is hosting a Come Get Ready With Us makeup event from 3 to 4.30 p.m. on February 7th in room 220. You must bring your own makeup and brushes. There will be snacks provided for anyone who's there. Everyone's welcome to come. If you have any questions, please email Janiah Terrell. See you there. Hey Novi, this is Luke, back again to give you some news about the Photography Interest Group. They'll be having their next meeting after school today in the Media Center Lab number one, right across from room 182. Today they're going to be talking about the natural world and its advantage. So stop by after school today and check it out. This is Luke signing off. What's up, Novi? Crochet Interest Group is having their sixth meeting this Thursday, February 8th from 3 to 4 p.m. in room 160. If you want more information, there'll be a flyer posted right here. See you later, Novi. What's up, Novi? Today I went to go see what people's favorite sportswear brands were. What's your favorite sportswear brand? I like Nike and Adidas. Probably Nike. Where y'all sleeping on Crocs right now? Like, the Crocs are fire, though. Champion? Uh, probably Nike. Uh, probably Nike. Probably Nike. My favorite sports brand probably has to be Nike. I feel like they make high quality material. Nike. Adidas. Speedo. Uh, I'm gonna go Adidas. Uh, Nike. 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 Crocs. Nike. Essentials. Nike. Probably Nike. Nike for sure. Nike. Probably New Balance. Nike. Nike. Nike for sure. So obviously Nike was the favorite, so they should definitely spot to us. See you later, Novi. The American Library Association said in a preliminary report that it received an unprecedented 330 reports of book challenges, each of which can include multiple books last fall. Again, I am not making this up, just quoting the New York Times. With more on this story, we go to Ms. Bradney. Libraries stand for ideas and information. That's what they're for. Um, and so, American Library Association Bill of Rights st states that libraries should support free expression of ideas and information and um, that we should always be trying to avoid situations of censorship. I think people always have the right to consider um, the materials that they have access to. And so I think for a lot of people, book challenges come from a place of concern. Um, in schools, I think a lot of times it's concern for what their students are reading or being exposed to. Um, and sometimes that concern is laced with fear. Um, I think sometimes it's a community member who has those same kinds of feelings about um, their public library. The problem arises when one person or small group has a problem with material and is trying to remove access from the whole community or institution. Really, I've seen just about anything, um, and there are many things that do not seem to have logic or pattern. I know, particularly um, in some other states, um, there have been particular lenses on um, books that deal with race and racism and um, books that feature LGBTQIA characters. Historically, there have been these phases of time. This is not the first time that we've had kind of like a big rush on um, book challenges and book bans, um, but this is, this is the biggest one um, historically. I think it becomes politicized in a lot of cases. Uh, it becomes a, a thing that parties, organizations, things like that think is important and there becomes a movement within those groups um, to, to put some effort into this. So this issue affects every school um, because book, challenging a book means suggesting that it does not belong on the shelves of a library. And when a book is removed, it is removed for all students. Um, I also become concerned working with students that if we are removing materials from the library because we're saying that they're not appropriate or bad, if those materials represent students in our school, does that send a message to those students that they are inappropriate or bad? 
and I never want that message to be sent to any student. We've had challenges all around this area and there are some materials that have been challenged kind of widely all around here and um, I also think this is a good time to open conversations amongst the people <laughs> about like what are we consuming? Let's talk about what we're reading, let's talk about what we're viewing, what, let's talk about all the media that we consume more. Let's have these conversations um, and chat about why we think they are good, bad, or, or otherwise. And now, a quick message from our student council. Rivals Week update. As of yesterday, Nova is winning with 665 points, while Northville is at 544 points. Let's keep this lead going with Adam Sandler Day tomorrow and Green and White Day on Friday. Remember that the Polar Plunge will take place tomorrow after school at 3.30 p.m. outside the tennis courts, and the Unified Game will start at 5.30 in the gym. More attendance does equal more points, so make sure you show up. Lastly, your Rivals Week t-shirts are in. Make sure you pick them up and wear them on Friday. You can also directly purchase shirts for $12.50 in the atrium during all lunches and wear them on Friday. And that's it from me. Back to you in the studio, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Novi Choir's Major Six will be performing their ICHSA set during B and C lunch in the auditorium. Thursday. That's tomorrow. Everyone is welcome. Make sure you attend. And that's how we'll be ending today's broadcast, Wildcats. Remember, Novi One Act, every U.S. election ever, has their second public show today at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. Make sure you show up. Hope to see you there. And your fourth hour teacher is next, so have a great day. Do you have a story that you want featured on the Cat's Eye News? Email us at nhscatseyenews at gmail.com. Just send us details, pictures, and videos, and we'll do the rest.